Hey, it's Andy and welcome to episode two of the blog development series. In this last episode, we discuss about the difference between a building a successful blog to one that completely bombs. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest you actually head back to episode one and watch that first. You need to understand what it will take to create a profitable blog. But if you have already watched it and you're ready to move on, let's get right into it. In this episode, we will begin with the basics of a website. Don't worry, I won't be going into any details or specifics of website. It's more of a simple explanation of what makes a website. So for starters, to build a website, you'll need two things, a domain and a hosting server. A domain is an address name for your website. Think of it like a nickname for your blog or a street address for a house. Without a domain, visitors won't be able to find your website. As for a hosting server, it is more or less like a storage unit. You need a server to be able to store all your information or data so that when a visitor lands on your website, that data is transferred to their computer. So using the street address example, if a domain is a street address, the hosting server is an actual house. In other words, if you only had a domain, which is the street address, and someone was to come visit, it would just be a plain block of land. Whereas, if you only had a hosting server, which is the house with no street address, no one will ever find it. So you can't actually have one or the other, you need both. So let me quickly head over to my computer and show you how to get both the domain and a hosting server. After that, I'll also show you how you can combine the two together so that you can have a live website up and running. So I'm over at Namecheap.com, that's N-A-M-E-C-H-E-A-P.com, and what Namecheap is, it's just a domain register. So every time you need to get yourself a domain name, you actually have to register through a register. And the domain register of my choice is Namecheap. They make it really easy to actually find a domain, register it, without actually hassling you with any other kind of promotions. So to get started, you first want to actually come up with the domain name and just type it into the search bar to see if it's actually available or not. As the internet is very huge and there's millions and millions and millions of websites out there, sometimes the very first website name that you come up with might be already taken. But just a simple search in this bar here and you'll be able to find out exactly if you can actually register it or not. So I'm just going to type in Ando's demo site and check to see if that's actually available or not. So just once I've typed that in, just click on search. So the results are in and the domain name is available. So that's awesome. As you see, this will cost me about just under $14 per year and that's Australian dollars. I personally like to keep with the .com extension because .com is the most popular extension out there. It's the first thing that generally people will type in and it's easy to remember. But as you can see, if you scroll down here, you can see you can choose other extensions as well, each varying in different cost. So you got .net for $16, a .club for $10, .io, and uh, different countries as well if you like, and so on. But like I said, I personally prefer sticking with the .com, so I'm just going to click on this little add to cart button. You'll see that for one year registration, it's going to cost me $13.72, and let's just actually check out the cart. So the reason why I really like Namecheap is because it's really straightforward. You're just going in there, getting yourself a domain without any other hassle. So as you can see, you can decide how long you actually want to register your domain for. So you've got the choice of one year, two years, three years, all the way up to 10 years. So if you do register it for a longer term, you'll get a bit of a discount. But for now, I'm just going to stick with the one year. Another neat thing about Namecheap is they do offer a free Whois guard. And what a Whois guard is, it's a privacy protection. So that you get a year for free. So your name, your personal email, and your phone number is all protected through this Whois guard. And you get that for free for one year. Next, they've got a few add-ons for your actual domain. So they do have the option of hosting your actual domain as well. But generally, I like to keep my domain name and my hosting service separate. This is so that I don't have all my eggs in the same basket. Just in case if anything does happen to other companies, I still have one or the other. So if there are any kind of problems, it makes it really easy to transfer all your data to different servers. You also got the option of securing your website using an SSL. I'm not so sure about the technical side of this, but generally I just skip through it. The next two options are rather quite pointless, and so I'm just going to completely move on and let's confirm our order. So next you're going to have to actually create an account. To create an account with Namecheap, it is free, and this is where it's going to store your domain name. We will be making a few accounts throughout this video, so make sure that you do write down your information somewhere and keep it safe, just so that you don't forget your login details. Again, you will receive an email with your registration information, but it's always nice to have a backup. All it takes to create an account is a username, a password, your first name, your last name, and your email address. But since I've already created an account before, I'm just gonna quickly sign in, and I'll see you in the next page. Alrighty then, so now it's actually time to add in our contact information. And over here, it's really just your personal details, like your first name, your last name. If you are registering on behalf of a company, then you would want that tick, 
Otherwise, just untick it if it's for your own personal use. Next, just fill in all your personal details like your address, your city, your state, your postcode and your country. Just to be on the safe side, make sure that you do put in your real details, just so it doesn't bite you in the butt. The last thing to tick off is your account security. You have the choice of enhancing your security by adding a phone verification. So if you were to make any changes, you'll also be notified by your phone with a special code and you're going to have to enter in that special code. So if you want that enabled, just tick that box. Otherwise, let's continue. The next step of the process is just to update your setup. So if you want to change your contact details, maybe because you're actually building a website for a client, then this is where you actually want to update your contact list. So over here is you can actually add a new contact and this is where you actually want to put your client's details in. Otherwise, if you're building it for yourself, then just keep everything as user default account contact and leave everything as is. And that's the same with administrative contract, your technical contact and your billing contact. If you do plan on building more than one site for yourself, then you can also tick this little box here where you save the configuration above so that the next time you buy a domain, everything's already set up. So just simply just tick that box and let's continue. Now we're at the billing process and there are a few different payment methods that you can actually choose from. So you can actually do a card payment of either Visa, MasterCard or American Express. So just fill in your details for your card and you're way to go. Otherwise, you also have the option of doing PayPal and account funds. So I'll leave that up to you on how you actually want to pay. Below is your receipt, where you actually want your receipt to be sent to. And then your renewal settings as well. So whether you want it to be automatically renewed after it's expired. So since we're only registering it for one year, as you can see, it's only one year. It can automatically renew it for you every single year. So you can just tick that. Uh, the same goes with your Whois card. Because you get the first year for free, you can tick that so that you automatically purchase the Whois card for the following year. Again, you can save all of this configuration above by simply ticking this box and everything would be automatically done for you for the next purchase. Lastly, we just got to confirm our order to make sure that we're happy with everything that we've set up. So how long we've actually registered for. So one year, we're happy with that. The free who is guard and our payment method. So my payment on choice is actual PayPal. I'm happy with all the settings and let's just check out all PayPal. So I'm going to quickly fill in my PayPal details, make the payment and then I'll see you on the other side. Alrighty, so our purchase has successfully gone through. As you can see at the bottom here, it's just a little small summary, so you've got your domain of one year, your free who is guard, and how much we got charged for it. So that's how you actually register your domain name, but that's only half the battle. Next, we actually need to get ourselves a hosting server so that we can actually combine the two and make our website go live. Without a hosting server, the domain is just the name. You need a place to store all your information. So when it comes to looking for a hosting server for your blog, there is a few things that I like to consider that makes it outstanding. Again, I just want to remind you that, you know, we are building a blog and a blog is considered an asset. So when it does come to investing a server, it's always good to actually have something that is more of a high quality than something cheap and easy to use. So the very first factor that I like to consider is whether the server is reliable. And when I mean reliable, I mean, like, is there any downtimes? Do they do backups? Are they secure? You really have to take all of this in consideration because again, the last thing you ever want for your blog is to have it completely crash or you know you lose your data and you can't retrieve it and then everything is just lost. The next fact is whether it's accessible, okay? And this just means all around the world. Some really cheap hosting might not cater very well for let's say someone in Australia, whereas a good hosting server would cater everyone around the world. Again, the reason why we're building a blog is so that we can actually communicate with you know all sorts of people and not just in a particular country. Next is the customer service. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this is crucial when it comes to finding a good hosting server. Since I'm not a very technical person, I always like to rely on their support and seeming where, you know, a lot of stuff can actually go wrong. It's always nice to have someone to actually contact, knowing that they'll get back to you very promptly and they'll treat you with the respect that you deserve, right? So customer service goes without saying. And then the last factor is speed. Now, speed is becoming more and more important factor when it comes to ranking your website and as well as user likability. I mean, there's nothing worse than waiting around for a page to load and you're just wasting time. This is where you're gonna get a high drop off rate and just by cutting that by a few seconds is gonna make a world of difference. And so search engines actually recognize this and as they want their best for their searches, they wanna make sure the website is fast. So when it comes to actually hosting a blog, the hosting server of my choice and one that I highly recommend is Traffic Planet Hosting. I mean, even the tagline itself, super fast WordPress optimized hosting, says it all. all. right, what I really like about this hosting server is they really emphasize on speed. 
unlike many other hosting servers where it's all cluttered and there's a whole bunch of traffic that you know really slowing down the server what these guys do here is they actually limit the amount of people using that server so that every website that's hosted on their server has optimal speed of course that's only one of many perks just uh, quickly scrolling down you can see that they do have security as well so their servers are quite secure their support is incredibly amazing I mean I've already had many sessions with support where you know they got back to me within a couple of hours and they're all very friendly and very helpful and they got a very easy user interface as well which is really nice so this is exactly what you'll be getting with traffic planet hosting you'll be able to actually host five websites again you know unlike other hosting servers where they give you unlimited websites the fact that they're actually limiting it means that you know again it's optimal for speed they have a one-click WordPress installation which is very handy another great feature is if you're already hosting your blog on a different server they'll actually migrate all your data to their hosting server completely for free and again if you're like me I'm not very technical when it comes to actually doing all this technical stuff I prefer to have an expert do it for me right because some of the stuff is just beyond me and it's just a massive headache so, so if you ever need any kind of help you know all you can do is just go to the live chat send them a question and they'll hook you up as soon as they can they also have a quite detailed knowledge base that you can actually check out so if you actually click on support you can see that you know they've got a ton of questions that are answered just through the knowledge base alone so just pick the category that best suits your question and go from there but otherwise when you're ready to actually jump in and grab a hold of traffic planet hosting and uh, get started with hosting your blog then I highly recommend just getting started with the business plan which is $25 a month again we are investing into our business so when it comes to actually building an online business it's really important that you do go for the quality stuff especially when you're trying to build your own brand so once you're ready just click on get the started button and just go through the prompts it's very similar to purchasing a domain name all you have to do is just fill out your personal details and uh, and your billing account as well but once you go through that, I'll see you in the inside. So once you've got your hosting server, you purchased it and you've logged in, this is where you'll land, okay? This is the actual dashboard for the client portal. So now that you've actually got a hosting server and now that you've got a domain name, the next thing you need to do is actually connect it to, right? To point the, your name servers over to your domain. So when it comes to actually looking for your name servers for your Traffic Planner hosting, it's very simple. All you have to do is just click on Manage or you can actually head over to My Service and then WordPress Hosting. Click on the server that you just purchased. So in this case, this is uh, our business account. All you have to do is just click on manage all sites on this account. Again, you can host up to five websites. So that's uh, very handy. So just click on that. Now this is where you look for all of your details. Okay, so um, anything got to do with your server details, you'll find it all on this page here. So on the left side here, you, where you find server details, just click on that. And then on this page here, you'll see that there's name server one and name server two. Okay, so these are the two name servers that you need to use on your domain register. So if this is a little bit confusing, don't worry, I will walk you through it. So I'm um, just heading over to Namecheap and logging into your actual account. All you have to do is just look for the domain that you just purchased. So just number of domains, we're just gonna click on here. Look for the domain that you just purchased. So I'm just gonna click on Andy's demo site. After that, all you have to do is just look for domain name server setup. So just this little bar here and just click on that. And now here's where you actually wanna insert both of your name servers. Okay, so as you can see, there's one and two. That's all you need to add. All right, just two lines, one on each line. Okay, so the very first one over here, just highlight that, copy the first name server, come over here and just highlight that and paste it over. Now you want to do the same for the second one. Again, just highlight, copy, go over to the second line and then paste. And once you've pasted your two name servers, last thing you need to do is just click on save changes and now our name service has been updated. So it will take anywhere between two to four hours, right up to 48 hours for your domain name to actually connect to your hosting server. Before that, you can't actually do anything with your website just yet. So you're gonna have to be patient. You will receive an email from Namecheap saying that it's successfully connected. So for now, I'm just gonna take a little breather. And once it's done connected, I'll get back into actually installing WordPress. Okay then, so my hosting server finally pointed over to my domain name, which is andysdemosite.com. A handy way to actually check out if you're unsure if it's successfully pointed over is to actually head over to your website. So the website that you just purchased on Namecheap, if you type that into the search bar, this window should appear. And this tells you that your website's actually live, but there's nothing installed on your server yet. If it wasn't pointed over successfully yet, you'll see a whole bunch of like something that looks like ads. It'll be pretty obvious, but this is what you're after. So the next thing for us to do is to actually install WordPress so that our website actually looks like something of value. 
So heading back to our dashboard for Traffic Planet, we now need to actually add that domain to the server so that we can actually install WordPress. Okay, and the process is pretty simple. Uh, again, just head over to your actual server, so your WordPress hosting, and just click on that. Click on the actual server that you want to install it on, so I'll just click on that. Now, before we actually went over to server details, okay, so we don't actually need to do that anymore. Uh, we now need to actually add the website, which is manage website, so I'll just click into that. Now, every time that you do purchase a new domain and you want to host it on Traffic Planet, you are allowed five websites, okay, so all you have to do is just enter the actual domain name into this area here. So here I'll type in Andy's demosite.com then I'll click on add website once you've clicked on add website the domain name will actually appear at the bottom here under existing websites and then all you have to do is just click on one click WordPress install and with this page it's just asking which domain you actually want to install WordPress on so just under domain click on the drop down arrow pick on the site that you actually want to install your WordPress on and then click on install WordPress it will actually take a couple of minutes to install but once it's installed, it'll take you to this page here. And uh, this is where you actually want to set up your WordPress login details. So with the site title, this is just the name of your website. Uh, you can change it within WordPress, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Your username, this is the actual name that you're going to be using to actually log in. I do advise to come up with something quite creative and not just admin. And then all you have to do is just enter your password twice and then uh, click install and everything's good to go. The reason why I actually like using WordPress instead of you know doing HTML coding is for obvious reasons. It's because of the technicality. Okay, with WordPress, everything is you know very simple to do. Uh, what you see on the screen is what you get. Whereas with coding, you know you you playing around with a whole bunch of you know mumbo jumbo. Right, uh, all these numbers and these symbols. Uh, I don't really want to get into too much detail on that because it is a, a, a massive headache. Whereas with WordPress, all you have to do is just you know create pages that you need to create. Uh, you can change any themes, add in plugins, and it really has evolved, okay? WordPress makes it so dead simple to create websites that pretty much anyone can just do it. And since WordPress was designed to be a blogging platform, it's perfect for exactly what we want to do, right? To build up a blog. So if you've never used WordPress before, I'll actually leave another video below this one to show you exactly all the, you know, little perks that you need to know, the basic foundations, and just, you know, answering some of your terminologies that might be confusing. But hey, if you've already worked with WordPress before and you know the basic fundamentals, then just head over to the next episode where I'll actually dive in deeper about WordPress, uh, you know, important pages that you should have, setting up everything to have a perfect blog, and we'll actually start seeing, you know, the results, seeing what our website will actually start looking like. So if you missed out on any of the websites that I walked you through on this video, uh, I'll leave all the links below that you can just go, go and check out. If I went a little bit too fast for you, then you know, feel free to actually watch it again and just go through it, pause it where you need to, and just make sure you, you do tackle it step by step. And then, as always, if you have any kind of questions whatsoever, you know, feel free just to leave a comment below this video, and uh, you know, Chuck and I will do our best to always get back to you. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for this video. You know, what we did was to actually get ourselves a domain, got ourselves a hosting server, and actually installed WordPress. So our website's not looking much right now, but in the next episode, that's where I'm going to walk you through on how to actually build up on your website and make it look a lot more like a you know professional blog so that you can just get started and start building up on your online business. So again, this is Andy and I'll see you in the next episode.